Hello everybody and welcome back to Ballymoon Castle. Today we're going to be doing the hay baling first of all, and then we're going to be moving on to some potato work. This has been requested in my previous episodes to do potatoes on Ballymoon Castle, and to be honest I think it is a very good idea. So what we're going to have to do is make sure all of the straw bales have been removed um, from field number, is it 19? Yeah, field 19. It's not a big field at all, it is perfect for potatoes. But first things first, let's just get all this set up. We need to put the drop nose Massey Ferguson on the baler. I'm hoping it's got enough horsepower. It is a little bit low, but the field itself is relatively flat, so there shouldn't be many issues. If there is an issue, we can stick it on the New Holland and that should solve any problems we may get. But fingers crossed, it won't come to that. So, wherever I put it, here it is. Yes, I remember. <laughs> I put it in here. It was a struggle to remove the tractor from in here, but it is possible. Let's hitch you back on. Bit of shuffling about. There we go. It is easier, to say the least, without manual attaching, but obviously it's not as realistic as we have just got an automatic PTO shaft being installed. So yeah, good and bad, definitely between the two, with and without. So I think really we should be able to do this with Follow Me, so I just row it up and the baler follows directly behind. If it doesn't work, then yeah, we can just do it ourselves. It's not exactly going to be hard, but yeah, it's going to save quite a bit of time. Anyway, jump back into this tractor in front. A bit steep down there. Go this way. But this is going to be the end of the field work in field number 22. We're going to be able to leave the grass again so it can regrow. Oh, actually, I do say that, but actually we're going to have to um, put a bit of slurry on. Keep it nice and productive. But that isn't really a rush. Get it all set up. The moment of truth. Let's see if it's got enough horsepower. It is fairly slow there, but it is moving. I'm surprised it's struggling quite so much to move, but I know these balers do require about 150 to 200 horsepower, and that tractor is, is it 125? It isn't an awful lot. 130, I think it is, I've just checked. If it is the uh, 5613 we own, I'm not entirely sure. Oh no, look! There is some grass left behind. I never saw this. It's a very similar colour. Well, it doesn't matter too much. We can still bale it. Hmm. The baler is still moving. Just about. In its own time. Very good amount of hay, though. If you remember me saying a few episodes ago, I said... Four or five bales from this would be perfect. We don't really need any more. If we do get any more, I'm not going to complain. It's still good. Uh, but yeah, we don't really have a use for them. The sheep, I tend to give grass to. You can give hay, but we don't need to. The only thing I'm going to use the hay for is power food. And despite the slow speed, the tractor there is doing it okay. It's amazing. The weather outside has just suddenly changed in real life. It was, uh, well I went outside about 10 minutes ago and it was pleasant, it's very hot today, at the time of recording this, it's, I think it's Wednesday, yeah, Wednesday today. Um, so yeah, it may not be as hot when you're watching this, I think this is Sunday's video. It's going to seem pretty weird me saying this when you're actually viewing it, because obviously it's going to be Sunday for you, but yeah, it's just gone from being really warm and pleasant to an absolute torrential downpour. It's amazing how it's just changed. I didn't even see any evidence of it. The sky wasn't even dark. It was still fairly sunny. It's amazing how these thunderstorms can develop. And there we go. We have finished. Also, I've just discovered I left the skylight window open and it's just rained in. Lovely. So I just have to go and shut that. Anyway, that should now follow us back. I will have to make sure the baler is switched off before it does leave the field. Otherwise, it's going to be picking up all of the dirt from this track. It's flying now. Loves going downhill. These bales over here, we're going to have to shift in a minute or two. 
it's actually more of a priority than it is to do the hay bales since this field needs to be planted with potatoes uh, the potatoes I think can be planted with the uh, New Holland tractor it's going to be the best one for it there we go, right let's just make sure it's all empty we have got our fair share of bales not bad at all wow I didn't realise we had so many that's fantastic let me just skip through here was that the page? Crazy Bell 16! And I thought we'd get between 4 and 5. Very good news there. Uh, the pickup is down. Pick up, pick up. And we're going to put this back in one of the sheds. So yeah, that, that proves it. This tractor was just about powerful enough. It was a bit of a struggle for it. Not really recommended. But we have just pushed it to its limit and it's been able to bail a field. What is it? A 56.13 or what? 10, 13? Yeah, 13. Which means it is 130 horsepower, I believe. So, not bad. I think the 5610 would have been a bit too small. It's about 105 horsepower. Put it into here. Switch off and start moving some bales. Now to move the bales we're going to be using the wheel loader with Black Sheep Modding's fantastic bale spike or grab. It's like a combination but it is very good. Incredibly useful especially if you're stacking four high. Uh, I don't think we will be stacking four high but we'll see. We'll be using the Satek joystick again today. Makes life... Whoop. <laughs> Almost took it out. Makes life much easier. I just realised that is actually full of grass. That should be put in the silo. I've done it again. This thing is amazingly hard to reverse. It turns. It's because it's rear wheel steer, isn't it? It steers as well. Makes it very difficult. So there is the wheel loader. Just in front of parts here. We're going to need it again very soon. Do we have... We do have something for the doors, don't we? Or do we? Yeah, I thought we did. Jump out, there we go. Uh, engine. Yes, we mustn't leave the engine running. I put the spike over near the slurry tanker. This bucket's going to be required here so I can keep it at the pit. And we're going to attach to it. So the fact that we're using a wheel loader is incredibly helpful to us since we'd have to mess about with rear weights and everything. It's already heavy enough to be able to pick up three or four bales. I just need to be careful here, otherwise I'm going to take out the roof. Which would not be good. Yeah. My, my point exactly. So, over to field number 19. Not an awful lot of bales. Um, I think it's in the region of 10, is there? There wasn't much. We're going to be using these for bedding and also for power food. Yeah, I really should stack them first. You know what? I kind of feel like doing this off screen. We've done a lot of bale work recently, so there's only so much you want to see. Gonna have to get this field cultivated as well. Oh, look at this. Deceptive view. Yeah, I'm I'm really not used to using it with the wheel loader. I tend to do this with a telehandler. I'll just put this one on the trailer. And then we'll do a bit of a jump cut. Oh yeah, I probably should be using those grabs. Those spikes to sink into the bales and keep them in place. All done. Let's take it back to the yard. We're going to put it into storage. No real reason to unload this again at the moment because the trailer is not even going to be used for anything else except for the hay bales and they can stay there for a while. Don't think there's any forecast for rain. So all is good except for my sacking which is, well, not good. That's the best word for it. 
So if I park that there, we can now go and get our cultivator. We also need to go and get the potato planter as well. Ah, <laughs> thinking about it, maybe we won't go and get our cultivator since it is this minute cavernal one shit over here. Uh, second thought, we will probably get something a little bit larger. Uh, yeah, something like the Vogel and Newt or Vogel Newt uh, Terra Disc 600. That's 8.3 meters. Yeah, it's not really worth the uh, the difference in size, difference in price. So there we go. We have got the New Holland on the potato planter. I'm about to attach this to the Massey Ferguson. Clearly too big for this tractor. All I'm going to do is transport it. Let's just see if it goes down at all at the back. Oh wow. Almost killed the suspension. Or whatever. Whatever it has. I think it does actually. Does it have a suspension? No, I can't quite see. I can see some shock absorbers in there. Anyway. Look at the state of that. Way too heavy for it. Let's take it back to field number 19 and begin. It's following okay, no issues. But yeah, this looks so heavy. Just by the way, the tractor is bending back at the uh, rear of it. I'm just trying to think where the refill point is for seed, for potatoes. Um, Obviously we know where the dress seed is, but I don't think it's going to work. I'd be amazed if it does. You can't really convert dressed wheat into potatoes. That just wouldn't work at all. I don't think it's going to take a genius to work out this is far too big for this tractor. But as you know, I love to try and push this game to its limits, so let me just see what it actually does. Who knows, it could really surprise us. Stop that there, it doesn't need to follow. Right. Well, it's moving. It is doing five miles per hour. We're not really going uphill though. There is a slight gradient, I suppose, but nothing extreme. Okay, lifted up then for some reason. I think the idea is it is just too small for the cultivator. But it was fun to have a go. Let me just go up here as well. I am surprised. It's actually doing very well. That is doing very well. Aha. This is bogging it down. Three. Three miles per hour. This is a gentle gradient. Back up to four. No, it's impressive. Very impressive. Massy power. Although, any tractor with the same horsepower would likely be able to do it just as well. I don't know if you saw, but there was actually a bale left in this field. I don't know how I missed it, but I did do. I've just pushed into the hedgerow, we're we'll going to get it later. And actually, this tractor is doing surprisingly well. So I'm going to actually continue with the worker while we go and sort stuff out with the other tractor. So yeah, we're looking for seed refill. I know there was a, a silo up here. My guess is potatoes are going to be included within this seed bracket. Um, I can't see why it wouldn't be. It is usually. Hope for the best. I gather that's what this is. <laughs> buying fertilizer. Yes. But that isn't buying seed. Seed is the back one. That's good though, that it fertilizes at the same time. Ah, there we go. And it's good that this place is local, because these things do actually consume the potatoes very fast. Although, I can't say that for this one since this one is a much larger potato planter. Um, I know that the small one is very hungry for potatoes. I really don't want to get too many, because although I know it does consume a lot, the field isn't very big, and this is least. Should we stop there? I'll stop at 50%. It's probably quite likely we're going to have to come back for some more, but that's better than wasting a load. Even that has cost 5,236 euros, and potatoes don't really get that much money. You need to have some very big fields to be able to make some decent money from them. You get a lot of them, but they're not worth much per ton. I'm going to start from the top, to where the cultivator is doing it from, and it's doing it very well. 
hoping this thing's going to widen. Yes, there we go. And actually, I'm not too sure if this is like a... Not a, not a direct drill, obviously, because it's not a drill, but a direct planter. I don't know if it will cultivate at the same time. It seems a bit of uncultivated ground here. Let me just see. No, it doesn't. So you do have to uh, cultivate it first like we've done. But it should still do a decent job. And the good thing about this field is we've got some very good grass headlands. They're very big. So we don't have to faff about leaving parts of the field untouched just so we can turn around. We can go right to the edges and make full use of it. Which is obviously what we want to do. And looking at this, it's a very similar width to the cultivator. About 6 metres. I'm not too sure what it is. Um, but it looks fairly wide. Oh, look at that. We've actually got a pond there. I almost dumped it in the pond. So yes, I go back on what I just said. We don't quite have as big a headland as I thought. But we should have this done in not an awful lot of time. That tractor is beginning to really struggle, I can tell, down there. In fact, this one's struggling, surprisingly. It's really being pulled to the side. You see how it's swerving. It doesn't like it. I do need one very high horsepower tractor to cater to these fields. So just taking a break from the potato planting there, so we've got to finish off the cultivating. We've pretty much finished. Uh, the worker couldn't manage these corners, so it is much easier just to do it yourself. What are those? Brambles. Some brambles down on the track. But as you can see, I'm over halfway, so we've done a pretty good job here. It's very fast. And to be honest, I actually think that the amount of potatoes we got was even too much. We'll probably have about 10 to 20% left. I'm so pleased I didn't fully fill it. That would have been ridiculous. So, I think if I put this in here, then we can leave it and come back to the, uh, go back to the potato planter. But yeah, I've got to say, it is struggling. I should have had a bigger tractor. It's just about manageable. We could have had a smaller potato planter, but I don't really like it. It's just too small. This one is perfect. Now we do have ridge markers as you can see. I don't need to use them. If it was the super realistic series I would do. If we had GPS we wouldn't have to either. We don't have GPS. I am just following the mark. It is going to be a bit trickier over here since the harvester is not going to have much space to turn around so really that corner over there um, probably shouldn't be done but I am going to do it just as we've got quite a lot left to do uh, we've got a lot of uh, potatoes left in the hopper but yeah practical reasons it probably shouldn't be I'm definitely going to have to leave a bit of space here and yeah we'll probably go back again just to maximise the amount of space we're using there. So we've left the space for the harvester and for us to get around if we need to unload the harvester. There is just no point making life difficult. So that is our potato uh, field planted and it's looking pretty good. It's all fertilised as well which is nice. So we are going to have to fertilise it again at some point but really that is it for the time being. And I think we're going to leave this video here. Nothing else really to do. Um, we'll be doing the hay bales at some point in the future and we do have to do some fertilising over in film 14 but otherwise we have got a fairly empty to do list I suppose yeah, the silage does need to be sold as well and we do need to do some more work on the animals actually no we've got a lot of stuff to do we've always got a lot of stuff to do but that is it for today so thank you very much for watching and as usual hope to see you again very soon bye for now